and tired. That's what I am. Once again, Charity and Miguel have survived the unsurvivable, and I'm denied the powers to which I was born. Whatever did I do to deserve this spate of rotten luck, Timmy? Well, it's like Timmy the stars. Now, don't you be fresh. Now, make yourself useful and whip me up a mug, Timmy. Not that that will help. I'd much rather be in the Bennett backyard keeping an eye on things. And that's where we'd be if it wasn't for that infernal Ross and his know-it-all computer. It's Reese, Tabitha. Reese. Reese, Ross, Ross, what's the difference? He's a busybody. That's what he is, calling me a witch. But Tabitha, you are a witch. Uh, whose side are you on, anyway? You know, I saw your face when you realized that Charity had escaped the incredible sinking house. Timmy saved her. The only wishes she knew it was Timmy who saved her. So she'd finally dump Miguel and marry Timmy. You're a doll, Timmy. You can't marry anyone, much less my sworn enemy. I don't know why I'm even talking to you. None of this would have happened if you hadn't disobeyed me and stolen my demon's claw. Charity, Kay and Miguel would still be in hell and I'd have my powers back. You know, it, we were lucky that we weren't destroyed on the spot. You do just like you like them. Thanks. Well, the least you can do is help me set this new electronic listening device up. I bought it with some of our hidden passion's money. <laughs> it's going to enable us to hear the goody goodies clucking away in their backyard next door. <laughs> oh, yes, Timmy, it's not over yet. Harmony's pain and suffering has only just begun. <laughs> I know you don't have a soul, but what happened to your heart? Your cousin almost lost her life thanks to you, and you've got the nerve to be annoyed that she survived? What do you want from me, Simone? Blood? All right, I almost died too, but do you see anybody fawning all over me? No. All they care about is charity, charity, charity. God, she makes me so sick I could just throw up. You are some piece of work. You can't stop thinking about yourself for one second. Mm -hmm. Miguel told me he loved me again. What? That's right. When we were in the house before it collapsed, he told me that he loved both me and Charity. Sure. He loves you as a friend, but Charity is his soulmate. Trust me. If you knew that you were the reason why Charity ended up in hell, he probably wouldn't even talk to you again. Every time I turn around, Whitney is always hanging all over Chad. She's too nice to tell her to get lost. You know, this really ain't fair to Simone. And I know I keep putting this off, but I gotta tell her how I feel about you. Look, my sister really likes you, Chad. I'm just worried about how she's gonna take you. We've run Louis. Love triumphed over evil, and Miguel and the girls are safe. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is love that did it. I know it is. I was so afraid I'd never see you again, Mio. We all were. No, <laughs> Ethan tried to go in after you. Thanks, man. Hey. Don't mention it. I mean, you're going to be my future brother-in-law. <laughs> Kay and Charity, they may not think of me as family yet, but I am. You worried about your mother? 
Uh, I was just realizing how lucky I am to have you. She doesn't have anyone. God heard our prayers and got the kids out of the house before it went down. Hey, Sam, I need some help with the supplies your man's just dropped off. Only so many prayers that God can answer. You got that right, Gracie. <laughs> the family survived tonight. They won't be intact for long. When I'm through, their lives will be filled with nothing but chaos and pain. <laughs> I think my mother could use one. Yeah, there's plenty to go around. Look, I know you got a lot on your plate with uh, you getting married soon and looking for a place to live. I'll be okay. I'm sure you will. But uh, if there's anything I can do... Hey, Sam, you just lost your home. Concentrate on your own family. That's exactly what I'm doing. out to you. Just wish he reached out to my mother. He loves his wife. And my mother loves him. I just don't want her to spend the rest of her life alone, that's all. Hey, I want you to get a chill. Hey. That's the rest out. Got it. How is she, Dr. Russell? She's a miracle, just like you and Kay. I can't find one good reason to send any of you to the hospital. And for the life of me, I don't know how you came through what you went through without a scratch or, or even a burn. Are you, are you not okay, sweetheart? I'm okay, Grace. It's true. They're all exhausted, but otherwise they're good as new. I was so afraid I was going to lose you. Mm. So was I, Kay. You too, Dad. See what they have, Ivy? Don't even try and mess with them. Come here, Uncle Hank. We're having a family moment. <laughs> so, we lost our house. We still have each other. Together forever. No matter what. <laughs> Together forever, no matter what. Who is that girl? One of the missing partridge children? She may think it's sweet, but then it's have so much love. They just lost their house tonight, but they still have each other. Oh. You think love is so grand, eh, Timmy? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what love is good for. Selling greeting cards and breaking hearts. Lots of hearts, shattered into millions and trillions of tiny little pieces. 
that can't be put back together again. Sam and Grace, Sheridan and Louise, Ethan and Teresa, Chad and Whitney, Keithy and Eve. <laughs> Watch and weep, Timmy. Watch and weep. Love means that I never have to say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go. He's with his family now. Not his entire family. Ethan should be with him, too. Well, perhaps someday he will be. But that's not what you're thinking. You're wishing that Sam had his arms around you right now. Can you blame me, Pilar? Can you blame me for wanting a man I have loved my entire life? For wanting Ethan to spend more time with his real father? Even Grace knows that Sam still has feelings for me. Gallego! How dare you tell me to shut up? I am sorry. You should hear yourself. I mean, my God, Ivy, do you not realize what went on here tonight? The horrible battle between good and evil. We almost lost our sons. I know, but I... there is no but. Have you not heard a word Father Lonigan has said? How much destruction do you have to witness to believe that there's evil here? It can, and it will destroy you if you don't change your ways. I don't care. I deserve to be with Sam. But says who? Really? You had a chance to be a family with Sam years ago. You could have told him about Ethan before he married Grace, but you decided not to. Instead, you stayed quiet behind the crane mansion walls, hiding, plotting, scheming your revenge against Julian and Alistair using Ethan. Well, you can't have it both ways, Ivy. You have to learn to live with the consequences of your choice. No, I don't accept that. I will get Sam. I can only pray that you reconsider before you bring evil back into our lives. <laughs> Too late. Evil doesn't need an invitation. How can I give up on Sam when I know? I know he still has feelings for me. May I have your attention, please? I know this has been a tiring evening for us all. I know you will all join me in prayers for the Bennets on the loss of their home. But at the same time, we should not forget to thank God for sparing what is most important, the lives of our children. You were right about this being a spiritual matter, Father. We all tried everything we could to save the children, but we couldn't. It was God and God alone to solve them through this. Next thing you know, they'll all be down on their knees singing Amazing Grace. It wasn't only God that saved them. Jimmy helped too. The small creature sent by the angel followed his conscience and did the right thing. Still can't figure out who he's talking about. If you will all join me for a prayer for the little fellow who gave his life for our children. Jimmy's not dead. He's alive. Do you guys hear that? Hear what? Never mind. Let's spin the wind. Your prayers reached God's ears and saved lives tonight. Father, uh, Father, it's me, Luis. I have to admit, I always thought that hell was a, a made-up place to, to scare kids into being good. I know it's real. I saw it tonight. Yeah, I think I speak for all of us saying I don't think we ever want to see it again. The good Lord willing, we won't. But there is no guarantee. True, we defeated evil tonight, but it is only one battle in a never-ending war. We must be ever vigilant for those who would lead us astray. But Father, how do we do that without being suspicious of everything around us? That's a good question. One must not lose one's trust. By the same token, we must not let our guard down. I fear evil is still afoot in harmony, laying in wait for another attack. 
If we are not careful, the next time it will destroy us all. Glory, hallelujah, the war's just begun. And when the last battle is fought, I'll be the only one left standing. And you too, of course, too. Destiny. We will prevail. Father, but you're scaring everyone. Yeah, haven't we been through enough? Oh, what with almost losing the kids to the demons in hell and for crying out loud, the Bennetts. They lost their house and everything in it. Oh my god, the house has been sucked in! We visited hell through our own eyes. Some of us, we even went there. I mean, the worst has to be over, yes? Luis, I think what Father's trying to say is that there's more to evil than damned souls or even the flames of hell. Evil exists all around us, even in places we would never think to look. Exactly, Pilar. Unfortunately, there are people in this world who sometimes act without considering the consequences. They want something for themselves and they go after it. Conscience be damned. They are so driven to achieve their own ends that they are capable of inflicting great pain on others, sometimes destroying themselves in the process. I bet he's talking about Ivy. Well, if he is, she won't learn from it. Ivy is so bound and determined to get Sam. She doesn't care who gets hurt. Could be talking about you, Kay. understands human nature almost as well as I do. <laughs> he realizes that Ivy and Kay will be the instruments of their own undoing. They'll continue to run after the men they want, come hell or high water. Which is good news for us, Timmy. Good news for evil. What about the others? <laughs> like lemmings to the sea, Timmy. All of them. They have no idea what pain and suffering their individual secrets will bring. Oh, sure. Kay may have invited the dark forces to this house in the first place by selling her soul to Hecuba. But now that evil has the address, it's not going any place soon. Sounds like Grace and Sam want to be alone. Maybe they won't make up all the way. <laughs> well, they want their privacy, all right, but not for the reason you think. Grace. You okay? You know, it... It really didn't hit me until I heard Louise talk about it. It's gone, Sam. My house is gone. Could have been worse, honey. Oh, yeah. I thank God that the kids are all right. But it was more than just a house, you know? Yeah. You remember the day I fell in love with it? <laughs> yes, you told me. Stop the car! <laughs> That's the house I want to live in the rest of my life. And lucky for us, I already owned it. <laughs> I was watching it burn. All these scenes flashed through my brain like, like I was watching some movie, you know, but it was our life. Okay. When we first brought her home from the hospital. And uh, 
Jessica, I'll, I'll dress up like a ballerina for a first trick or treat. And you remember that time you watched Noah hit the ball through the attic window? We thought you were going to be so mad at him, but you just grabbed him by the neck and said, way to go, buddy. That was our home. Oh, it's where we... It's where we lived and laughed and cried. And loved. Don't forget loved. I'll build you another house, Grace. As long as we can do it together. Let's start over from scratch. No. Our marriage is gone. Just like our house. No, it is not. I will not let it be. But I love you. And I'll be damned if I let anything or anyone take that away from us. Tired, Kay. Um, I'm a little sleepy, but I just need some rest. That's not what I meant. It cannot be easy pretending you have a soul. What if I never get it back, Father? I will pray that you do, child. But you must do your part. You know, I thought that Hecuba lost her battle when Charity was returned from hell, okay? That my soul would just be returned to me. I already did what you asked. I mean, I told everybody where Charity was. What more can I do? I think you know the answer to that, Kay. In order to reclaim your soul, your motives must be absolutely pure. Are they? Keepers, losers, weepers. <laughs> it's mine now to do with as I please. And what does Tavi Priest to do with it? I haven't quite decided yet. But one thing's for certain. It'll come in very handy when it's time to rip Miguel and Charity's lives apart. <laughs> back here all alone. Oh, I, uh, well, I just, I came so close to losing you tonight, Ethan. I just needed a few minutes by myself. I thought it might have something to do with Sam. Ethan. Look, look, I'm sorry, Teresa, but I need to speak to my mother about this. If you don't want to hear, it's, it's fine. All right. Stay. Okay. Look, I guess I've been so angry with you lately. I didn't realize how alone you were until tonight. Oh. Oh, oh that's really sweet. That's really sweet, darling, but I'm fine, really, and I, I don't think I'm going to be alone all that much longer. Are you talking about Sam? Because if you are, I don't understand. I mean, you can't very well break up a marriage. Well, maybe there's just not that much of a marriage left to break up. I don't follow. Well, maybe Grace realizes that Sam still loves me and she is going to push him straight into my arms. Our marriage is the most important thing in my life. I won't let it be destroyed like our house was. It's too late, Sam. Grace, not if you don't want it to be. I mean, look what happened tonight. I mean, everyone was sure that we had lost Kay, Charity, and Miguel. Now, I don't want to take anything away from God. But you know, as well as I do, Miguel's love played a major part in saving Charity, too. Just like my love for you will bring you back and keep our family even stronger. You keep forgetting that you have another family, Ivy and Ethan. You know, I watched you with them tonight. And Ethan almost lost his life tonight. And Ivy was grateful to me for saving his no, life. No, Sam, it was much more than that. Well, maybe to her, but not to me. 
Look, Ethan is important to me, but accepting him as my son doesn't change my love for you, and Noah, and the girls. Grace, I, I can't live without you. And I can't believe that you want to live without me. Tell me. Hey, tell me that you love me. Tell me that you want things the way they used to be. Oh, Sam, I do. I want it more than anything in the world. Spill it, buddy. You got something on your mind that's not the cracks in the ground. Right. <laughs> what was the first clue? Maybe the fact that you can't take your eyes off Sheridan for more than a minute at a time. Well, I want to ask Sheridan to marry me. I'm scared to death. You. Officer, I'm not afraid of anything that moves Lopez Fitzgerald. You're scared of a girl? Yeah, but she's not just any girl. I think I'm crazy about her. Tell me something I don't know, pal. It's taken a while to get to this point. I mean, I've, I've always been crazy about her, but... Oh, you know, it's just that kind of commitment. Heavy duty. You don't know me, explain to me. Right. Then it hit me. What am I waiting for? I know that she's a woman for me. If I sit on the dime too long, I could lose the best thing that's ever happened to me. I don't even want to think about what my life would be like right now without Sheridan in it. Sounds like your, your nerves went the way of the demons tonight. Right out the window. Yeah. I guess you're right. You know what? I'm gonna do it. When I get back to Sheridan's place tonight, I'm gonna pop the big question. Yeah, I'm gonna ask the woman I love to marry me. What was it like? I mean, I know some of us saw hell, but I mean, you guys actually were up close and personal with it. It was worse than anything you could ever imagine. It was awful. And it felt like it was never gonna end. Is that how I felt to you too, Kay? Yeah. I mean, just like Charity and Miguel said. Well, I've never seen a fire like that before. It was red hot. How'd you guys get out without getting burned? I wish I could answer that. The flames hurt. But they were nothing compared to the pain and suffering everywhere that you looked. And I was so afraid that I was going to spend the rest of my days like those lost souls who knew they were never getting out. I wonder what those poor people did to end up like that. They committed sins that cost them their souls. It's sad, really. Just because of one mistake, they're going to spend the rest of their days suffering in the worst kind of pain. I mean... I can't imagine knowing that I was going to spend the rest of my days living like that. Why would Grace push Sam into your arms? Well, because. She knows it's the only solution. Believe it or not, Grace has given Sam an ultimatum. Told him he doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell with her until he resolves his feelings for me. It sounds risky to me, Mother. No. It's the only logical solution to a very complicated and uh, delicate situation. Look, Grace understands that Sam and I were pulled apart by my father. I was tricked into marrying Julian. It's not that we fell out of love with one another. And I know that when Sam spends any amount of time with me at all, he'll realize what Grace and I already know. That he hasn't gotten over his feelings for me. But he still loves me. That's all I ask. Just give me a chance to prove how much I love you. There's nothing for you to worry about. I'll rebuild our marriage from the ground up. Just like I'll build us a new house, exactly like the one we lost. We'll have new memories in it. All of us. As a family. 
I so want to believe that can happen. It's all you got to have is faith. Well, then we have a little bit of a problem, Sam. Because I used to have boundless faith in, in you and I and what we shared. I mean, I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that nothing could shake that faith. I'm so sorry. And I just wish that was enough. Look, but we can get it back again. Now that we don't have any secrets from each other, we can start over with an even stronger foundation. Not until you do what I ask you to do. Grace, I don't need to resolve my past with Ivy. Look, I already know what I feel for her. And I know what I feel for you. can believe in your love for me is if you spend some time with Ivy and sort it out. Until you do that, we don't stand a chance. Oh, be careful what you wish for, Gracie. You might just get it, that, and a whole lot more. <laughs> to me, it's worried about grief. He hates you, And look the other way when it happens, Dollface, because like it or not, it will happen. Grace's middle name is Pain. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the look on her face when she finds out what really is in Sam's heart. <laughs> we almost married Beth right out of high school. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different. I really cared about Beth, but I love Sherry. I was pretty wild about her myself, if you'll recall. Yeah. No hard feelings, right? <laughs> nah, no hard feelings. I, I always wanted the best man to win. <laughs> it's funny, you know? Because I always thought that love and marriage were two things that most people went through in life. You know, like getting your first paycheck or losing your virginity. And then wham. One day I run into Sheridan. She got under my skin for the first time I saw her. She, she drove me nuts. I don't remember. <laughs> it's like, you know, one day I'd be screaming at her. And the next day I'm thinking about whether or not I want to make love to her. I didn't even see it. It was right in front of my face. She was stubborn, strong, yet beautiful and fragile. There's one reason, one important reason why I have to ask her to marry me. Because I can't live without her. I can't imagine what it would be like to spend one day on this earth without her in my life. I love her. I love you too, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, those demons tried to kill you. And, and you, you sitting here talking like you felt sorry for them. I do. Look, the only thing that they know how to do is try to hurt other people. They're in such agony. Well, Charity's right. But if I never see them again, it'll be too soon for me. You're right. It was a horrible place. And thank God we made it up. You better change your ways. Or you're gonna end up like those soulless creatures in hell. Thanks, I'll see you. You know what, Simone? If I were you, I wouldn't worry so much about me. You might spend your time a little bit better keeping your eye on Whitney and Chad. <sighs> How am I going to get my soul back? What do you think you're doing, Whitney? Chad's my boyfriend. 
Simone. Look, Simone. There's something we're gonna have to get straight right now. You really think Sam still loves you? I know he does. I know he doesn't, and we would have been married, and he would have raised you as his own son if we hadn't been ripped apart by other people. He was your first love. Maybe you do belong together. Thank you both so much. Thank you, but you know, I, I really, I just would like a little time by myself, okay? Of course, Mother. Mm -hmm. Teresa, I know what you're thinking. That there's no excuse to break up a marriage. What if Sam really still does love my mother? That's what I'm afraid of. You loved Gwen before you loved me. So does that mean that one day you're just going to turn to me and tell me that you never got over her? Why should I spend more time with Ivy when I already know that I don't love her? Tell me the same thing after you spend some time with her. <sighs> Sam, I don't want the same exact house we used to have any more than I want the same exact marriage we had. I want something better. I want something stronger. Something so rock solid that nothing can shake it or hurt it or take it away. Can't you understand that? I don't know. Mike! Uh -huh. uh -huh. What the hell are you doing here? Haven't you caused enough pain? Huh? Why don't you just leave me the hell alone? No, oh, Sam. Let her stay. It's about the three of us now. And whether she is here in the flesh or not. So come on, Ivy, join us. Maybe we can resolve this tonight. <laughs> 